very, very short. Uh, it indicates basically that Jesus' own relatives thought he was crazy. They thought he was mad. And when it was all these crowds and all this talk about him, and again, they would have known him as the carpenter's son, or uh, they would have known him as Joseph, or the guy who fixed our door, the guy who built our table, whatever it was like. But, but this whole new persona uh, wasn't, wasn't familiar to them at all, and they thought he was crazy. They actually thought he was mad. In our first reading, we have the news that David receives uh, that Saul, the king who was, the former king who was trying to kill him up until relatively recently, mm-hmm. uh, that the king was, had fallen in battle, had died. And also the king's son, Jonathan, who was a good friend of David's, he had also died. So David is, is, is stricken. Okay, now, we've been following David and Saul, uh, the book of Samuel, there for the last couple of days. So we've seen the... <clears throat> the rise of Saul being chosen as king, then his arrogance, disobedience to God, then his jealousy of David, and then David anointed king and uh, slays Goliath. Well, he's he's anointed, doesn't become king yet, he's anointed, uh, and then kills Goliath. Saul is jealous of him, wants to kill him. Uh, Jonathan intercedes for him, but ultimately Saul still wants his head. Yes, we we read about uh, Saul coming into that cave where David was hiding, and David came so close, or Saul came so close to David, David was able to cut off the bottom of his cloak. And then when King Saul left, he said, "This is how close you were to me." He says, "I could have killed you, but I didn't." Saul recognizes he's a virtuous man, and says, "Yes, you should be. You should be king." But now then, Saul falls in battle. So, so David David uh, has had a lot of challenges already. <clears throat> a lot of adversity, a lot of difficulty. And in these days as well, we've been talking about perseverance. And I, I think we, we can't talk about it enough and we can't live it enough, more importantly than just talking about it. Perseverance in today's world for a Christian, for a Catholic, is going to be absolutely essential. Because the, 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 there are so many opponents, there's so much, so many voices against us. There's so much trying to push us down and silence us. Like, if we don't persevere, like, who will? Who will? As, our, as, our, as the number of people who actually believe what the church believes, as that number diminishes, then our voice is all the more important. So if we don't speak up, who will? If not me, then who? If not now, then when? So this, this great responsibility is entrusted to us. <clears throat> and I always find it interesting that, that difficult times or challenging times can often bring out in someone this, this desire to fight, this desire to give themselves for a cause. It's, I mean, you think of Irish history, right? Every time we've been oppressed and outnumbered and so on, that's when the, the farmers get together with hurleys and they stick a six-inch nail through the end of the hurley. I'm taking on the world, boys. <laughs> I'll bait them soldiers out of this country. And, you know, with forks, forks and her, honestly, like forks and hurleys to take on English trained sol- soldiers. Like, incredible. But just, they want their country back. They just want their land back. But so then these difficult times can, can cause, can, ra- can rise up, cause these heroes, hopefully saints in our case, to rise up. And I was just thinking this morning, like, are there any stories? of things that were said to be impossible, things that were said to be um, foolish, almost. And you might have heard, I, 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 I told the story, that's, that's a long time ago now, but uh, Ernest Shackleton. Ernest Shackleton was actually an, an amazing explorer, actually born in Kildare, so he's Irish. Uh, we'll claim him. Uh, he fought in the First World War for the English, but again, we, we okay, long story, but, but he was born in Ireland, okay? And Ernest Shackleton, uh, this is, so this is the, the end of the 19th century into the 20th century. <clears throat> and he had such drive in him. Keep in mind at the time, the English Empire spanned like, most of the known world, all of the known world at that time, uh, from, the whole way from India to, to Canada, North America and so on. Um, so, and he then wanted to, to engage in these voyages of discovery, and like, like the North Pole, South Pole, especially Antarctica. South Pole, Ernest wanted to be the first man to get there. Okay, keep in mind, ships are not the big kind of ice-breaking ships that we have these days. I think for the most part, they were still made of wood. Uh, so like, e- expeditions were dangerous. 
you know, you didn't have all this kind of fancy gear that we have now, you know. Um, even, even fleeces. Fleeces didn't exist. Just really, like, so light and warm. They didn't exist back in the day, okay? So you went, like, with, with I don't know, wool. Woolly jump, like woolly jumpers. You went on an expedition to the South Pole with a woolly jumper on. Do you know, no gadgets, no gizmos, just determination. And what's just incredible about this, this expedition is <clears throat> Ernest Shackleton published in the paper the following advertisement looking for people to accompany him, right? And just listen to this, because this is just an absolute insanity, and I love it. Men want it, no offence to, to women, you're great and all, but, but there are no shops in Antarctica, okay? And, and we can't have 17, where is she? We can't have 17,000 bags brought with us to Antarctica. We have to, tra we have to travel light, which means two pairs of shoes max. Okay, good. No slippers, hot water bottles. Okay, none of that. So, so goes the advertisement. Men want it for hazardous journey, small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, <laughs> safe return, doubtful, <laughs> honour and recognition in case of success. And he's inundated with letters. Why? Why? <laughs> Why on earth? Would anybody sign up for that? Okay, now this, this taps into something, uh, if, if, allow me to be, I don't think it's sexist, but okay, I think this really taps into something in, in the male psyche especially. Do you know what I mean? Like think of how the church is presented to people, how walking with Christ is presented to people today. Oh, it's grand, you just, you know, you pray a little, you sing Kumbaya, Do you know, we sit around in circles and talk about our feelings and just let Jesus be our best friend. And then, you know, we make each other little posies and daisies and it's all nice. And then we're good people. Do you know I mean, that's, that's like, how, how is the faith presented to men? Uh, it's like, there's nothing, when are men told, as Catholics, man up? Man up or, or there's the door. Do you know, we don't need, we don't need people in the church who don't care about the church. We don't need people in the church who don't like Jesus. We don't need people in the church who don't like what the church teaches. Start your own. Start your own to work away. Head off. Best of luck. Well, not best of luck. I mean, no, well, luck doesn't exist, so yeah. <laughs> best of luck. Whereas the, the, the opposite actually works. This is what we believe. This is what we must believe because it is given to us by God. And by God, we must stay faithful to it because it's given to us by So it's not wrong. It was given to us by God. It's right. It's the truth. I may understand it. I may understand part of it. I may understand none of it. It doesn't make it less true. So the Lord is calling us today, like, especially us men, like, to persevere in the truth. And I, I think we, in, similarly, I mean, <laughs> to be honest, let's just rephrase Ernest Shackleton's letter slightly. Priests wanted for hazardous journey, small wages, bitter bitter cold from some people, <laughs> right, <laughs> who, who don't want to listen. Long months of complete inner darkness. <laughs> Constant danger. Yeah, exactly, especially of choirs. All right. <laughs> Safe return doubtful from certain parish pastoral council meetings. All right. Honour, recognition, and eternal life in case of success. Do you mean, like, when, when it's phrased that way, I think this, this rouses up the heart of a man. Like, if this is worth doing, it's worth doing well. If this is worth doing, then it's worth fighting for. If this is worth fighting for, this is worth dying for. So let's do it. Like, if the truth is, is the truth, then it's worth giving your life for. The men who signed up for this were willing to give their lives for, for what actually? Money didn't matter. And similarly, you think of uh, the so many hurling teams and, and football teams around the country who are going out training in this weather. I'd like, not for money. They don't get paid. They may get even some local glory. 
maybe, maybe, maybe national glory if you're if you're part of a, a big team or from Kilkenny or Tipperary or whatever, some county with a with Kerry or Dublin. Okay, let's not get lost in the details. Uh, you may get some glory, but even even a little local glory, just to be told by the men on your own team, even if you, if you even if you lost, to be told by the men on your own team that was some goal by, that was some point you took, that was some hit you took, and you got back up. Just to have some recognition that you took a hit for a cause that we believe is worth fighting for. Why on earth don't we apply this to our faith? Why on earth ha- have, have we missed this opportunity to tap into that, that desire in a man to give his life for something worthwhile? If we believe that what Christ gives us is the truth, then it's worth fighting for. It's worth dying for. It's worth becoming a priest for. It's worth directing your family towards. And these days, as Catholics and as Christians, it's worth taking a hit for. Because everything else will pass. All the other glories and money and stupid things, all those Botoxes and facelifts, all those kind of things will pass, and everything is going to eventually droop. And (laughs) the whole lot's going to sag. But, But the hits I took for the Lord, if I'm faithful to him, he will be faithful to me. So we ask the Lord today for that determination, perseverance, and most especially just for that simple love for him and love for his name, a love so great that if it requires me to make a sacrifice for him, I'll do it. Lord, in these difficult and dark days, may you raise up saints. May you raise up holy men and women to renew your church.